Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, uBlock Zero Copy, um, how you're going to use it in Android. Um, so before um, we go about the solution, um, let me uh, briefly discuss about the problem statement we have. Um, so in the Android OTA, that is over the air updates, um, the current storage stack looks something like this. Um, so we have a read-only partition called slash system. You can think of as a root file system, um, uh, which is x4 or error of us. And that is mounted on top of DM Verity, and then DM Verity is stacked on top of um, another device mapper module called DM User. Um, so DM User is an out of tree kernel driver which we maintain in Android. Um, so it's a very simple, fairly simple driver. Uh, all it does is any IO requests from uh, root partition uh, gets routed all the way to the user space. So you can think of like a fuse, but this happens at the uh, block device level, block layer level. So uh, the I.O. gets routed to the user space. Um, so we have a daemon in the user space which implements the snapshot logic, wherein it checks what, how do we handle that specific I.O. request. Um, so why do we need this um, snapshots? Uh, so that is the next uh, slide here. Uh, so in the, in the, uh, Android has a specific OTA format, which is, uh, which is very custom specific. So when we compare two uh, image files, uh, which is block devices, uh, it, we encode four different uh, block level operations. Um, so let's, let me just focus on two operations here, which is the pain point which we are actually facing right now. Um, one is the copy operation. So what it does is that uh, if you see here the, um, the uh, um, so between the source image and target image, uh, we have like three copy operations, meaning that on the target image, block zero is actually just shifted uh, from the source image with block one. It's just a shuffling of blocks between um, the source and the destination. That's, we call it as a copy operation. And then uh, the second um, uh, operation is called the replace, meaning that the entire block, uh, when I say block here, it is a 4K block. Um, so when we say a replace operation, um, it, the entire block is rewritten, which means that uh, we will have to write that entire block. Um, so we encode that data in a compressed format and stash all this in a block device. Um, so during OTA generation, uh, we encode all these operations and s store this in a block device specifically. So all the copy operation will just take metadata format, saying that what blocks have been moved. But the replace ops are the heavy operations because uh, it encodes the data in a compressed format in the block device. So all these operations today, uh, that's how uh, we implement this in the user space through the snapshot mechanism. Um, so. So if you look at the IO path uh, for the actual copy operation for a single 4K block size, um, so uh, you see here uh, three, um, three towers here, right, from a flame graph. So what is happening here is that when we get an IO request for a copy, meaning that, hey, uh, get me the uh, data from block zero, the IO goes to the user space daemon, which is nothing but the leftmost tower here. Um, the daemon gets the request from the uh, underlying block device and then gets the data to the user space and then sends the data back to the kernel once again. So there is constant back and forth uh, data movement between user space and the kernel, even though the data is not, uh, is not manipulated anything in the user space at all per se. Uh, that's for the copy. But for the replace operation, it is exactly a similar uh, flame graph, but once we get the data to the user space, we decompress the data in the uh, user space and send the decompressed data back to the kernel. So uh, the prim primary problem here is that we are spending a lot of CPU cycles unnecessarily. The data movement is happening between user space and the kernel. So for instance, as you see here, about 15% of the CPU cycles is spent just moving the data from the kernel to the user space. Um, so this is the another view of the same uh, 4K IO request from the flame graph perspective, um, wherein when the application, our, uh, our most beloved FIO application, when we are sending an IO request, 4K IO request, uh, it's taking about 100 microseconds to actually finish, even though the actual, uh, uh, at, the, at the bottommost UFS layer, it's about 25 microseconds. 
So if we scale this, for instance, what's the problem with this is that, let's say uh, we have an eight gigabyte partition. And um, if we split that eight gigabytes with a 4K block size, we have about 2.1 million uh, blocks, 4K blocks. So 2.1 million of 4K blocks taking 100 microseconds means about 210 seconds, which is about three and a half minutes. Meaning that once we reboot the device after an over-the-air update, it takes about three and a half minutes to scan the entire partition. Although uh, we do parallelize things and get down that number today, but that is at a trade-off wherein we are taking more CPU cores. So that's the fundamental problem here with the uh, copy as well as the replace operation. Um, so how do we address this? Um, so there is. There's this ongoing update, um, upstream work going on right now uh, with uh, uBlock Zero Copy, primarily driven by Ming Li. Um, so we, uh, we did a, a prototype of incorporating uBlock uh, into the existing storage stack, um, wherein we mount the uh, slash system on top of uBlock. Uh, so that removes our tech debt of uh, removing DM user. And then the upstream, current upstream work of using Zero Copy, meaning so uBlock, as some of you are familiar with, it's based on IO Uring framework. So uh, what it does with zero copy is that you have just one syscall, IO Uring SQ enter. Um, you send the data uh, to, so the leftmost um, tower here is exactly similar. You're actually getting the data from the underlying block device, but the data doesn't go back to the uh, user space. Uh, you just, uh, there are two SQE buffers, um, which is being shared within the same SQE group. Um, so the data is just migrated within the kernel itself. Um, um, so the whole idea here is that we move the complex metadata operation to the user space, but the data continues to data migration continues to reside in the kernel itself. Um, so, um, so we did this. We took the uh, uBlock zero copy patch uh, upstream, uh, the v5 patch upstream, and ran this on Pixel 6 running Android mainline. Um, um, so we were able to uh, get the same perfetto traces. Uh, now, as you see here, um, there isn't much uh, um, back and forth uh, uh, kernel and user space movement. And um, the latency cuts down literally by about 50% right now. So, um, so that's a big win. Um, but there are some still uh, open-ended challenges here. Um, although the uBlock zero copy is very promising, it addresses 50% of the problem. But the other problem is the replace operation, as I mentioned above. We store uh, the data in the block device in a compressed format. So. With zero copy, um, what happens is that what we really need is once we get the data, uh, once we get the data from the underlying block device, we need to decompress the data. Today, that decompression is happening in user space. Instead of that, what we really need is we need to decompress the data in the kernel itself and send the data back to uh, the uh, user space application. So with that, uh, that'll be a big win. Um, so. That's the uh, that's the another extension of zero copy uh, which we are looking at. Um, so um, yeah, that's uh, so I, I had a chat with Ming Li who's working on the zero copy and he was gracious enough to give us a couple of suggestions on how to extend this. Uh, there are a couple of ways to do this. One is through BPF. Uh, uBlock currently supports um, uh, is being explored through use BPF, wherein you can explore Kfunk. Uh, to uh, do the decompression in the kernel itself. And the other way is to add new IO Uring opcode. Um, so uh, wherein uh, the, a new opcode can be used to uh, tell what kind of uh, decompression logic to be used for. So those are the two exploratory paths we are uh, exploring right now. But um, uh, if there are any other use case or suggestions, we'd be happy to uh, take a look at. So the primary motivation here is to cut down the uh, post 
OT, boot time, uh, that's the primary motivation, and also reduce the uh, uh, CPU contention because um, we have seen uh, primary um, uh, concerns with some of the low memory device uh, uh, wherein, like watch and Android TVs, uh, where they constantly run into um, ANRs post OTA boot. And uh, addressing some of these concerns is the primary motivation here to drive this. Uh, Yeah, uh, so if you have any other use case, for instance, uh, I, I had a chat with uh, the upstream maintainer of uBlock, and the other use case is being looked into is the uh, QCOW2 compression. Uh, so uBlock currently is being exp uh, explored to use compressed QCOW2 image. So that's the other use, use case which we are looking at as well. Um, that, that might primarily fit into the uh, same problem what we are facing right now. So uh, uh, we'd be looking at uh, exploratory parts and sending out some of those patches in the next uh, upcoming quarters. So, but if you have any uh, uh, questions or suggestions, please feel free to reach out. <laughs>